Congratulations, everyone, on completing Volume 1 of the CSC. A significant accomplishment given the amount of material, practice questions, learning activities, note-taking that you have done to help understand the course materials. As we noted in the introduction to the course, the CSC gives you the building blocks that cover a wide range of topics. The focus of Volume 1. Our main focus in Volume 1 was understanding the different financial markets and financial instruments that help to facilitate the transfer of capital from savers and users through the various financial intermediaries. Here's a quick recap. You learned about the important role played by financial intermediaries. Without banks, investment dealers, credit unions, case populaires, the transfer of capital from savers to users would not work as smoothly as it currently does. You learned about the various financial markets so that you understand where the different types of financial instruments trade. You should now have a solid idea of where stocks, bonds, and derivatives trade, and also the difference between auction and dealer markets. You learned about the many different types of financial instruments, their features, and benefits and risks. In Volume 2, you will use this knowledge as it applies to more advanced financial products, such as mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, and other managed and structured products. Before moving on, are you able to answer the following questions? What role does investment capital play in facilitating the transfer of capital? How do auction and dealer markets differ? What roles do IROC, the CDIC, OSFI, and the SROs play in the industry? Can you describe the client-focused reforms? Which phase of the business cycle is characterized by an increase in business failures and falling employment? What phase of the business cycle is characterized by an increase in business failures and falling employment? What are some of the key determinants of the exchange rate? How does the Bank of Canada implement its inflation control policy? What is an overnight reverse repo and when is it used? What are the key features of callable, extendable, and convertible bonds? How do sinking funds and purchase funds differ? How would you characterize a bond issued in the U.S. in U.S. dollars by a Swiss company? If you are given the years to maturity, the current market interest rate, and the current price of a bond, can you calculate the bond's yield to maturity? If a bond has a present value of $952, what does that tell you about the bond? What is the relationship between bond prices and interest rates? Does a stock split affect the dollar value of a company's equity? What does a cumulative feature on a preferred share mean? How does a margin account differ from a cash account? What is the main risk of taking a short position on a stock? How is a good till cancelled order executed? Can you list three differences between exchange traded and OTC derivatives? When is a call option in the money? When is a put option out of the money? How does an investor carry out a covered call strategy? How does a primary offering differ from a secondary offering? Can you describe one feature of an over allotment option? What is the balancing equation for the statement of financial position? What is the link between the statement of changes in equity and comprehensive income and financial position? This list is far from exhaustive, a random selection of topics and concepts. However, it should give you a good idea of where your strengths and weaknesses are and may alert you to additional review before attempting the exam and moving on to Volume 2. We also encourage a thorough review of the glossary for the key terms you have come across in this first volume when preparing for the exam. Hey, thanks for supporting this channel. My name is Carlo, and I wish you the very best on your career and all your financial endeavors. See you next time.